Hi there, my chickens, and welcome back to NTE. So let's go through another question, right, that looks at um, motors and generators, right? This is in a different form. It's in a graphical form, right? So you must be prepared to identify and be able to analyze these questions in any form that they give you. So this question is adopted from the prelim exam, right? This is specifically the one that was written in the KZN province, right, this year, right? So this is a 2020 prelim exam, right, for um, physical science paper one. Okay. So it says over here that a coil, right, is rotated in a magnetic field of a generator, okay? Generator. Okay. The varying induced EMF obtained, right, we already spoke about in the previous video, that if you take a coil and you actually move it in a magnetic field, you induce an EMF, right, in that coil, okay? So that induced EMF, right, or the potential difference, is what is represented on this graph, okay? You can see on the y-axis, we've got potential difference, right, on the x-axis, we are representing time, okay? Now let's analyze this. We basically have over here the shape of a sine graph. Can you see that? Okay. So when we have this shape, we can immediately identify that this is actually a AC generator. Right? Why can we say this? Well, basically, it's the meaning of AC, alternating current, right? So, at one point in time, our induced EMF is positive, and then it switches sign, and we end up having a negative um, induced EMF. Okay. So, let's just go to the questions. 9.1 says, which type of generator was used to produce the above graph? Well, we already said that that generator is a AC generator. Cool. Nine point two. What structural feature, okay, of the generator allows it to produce the above type of graph? Where well, we also spoke about this in the previous video, right? We said that basically, whenever we want to create something that is AC, what we need to uh, use is these things called slip rings. Okay, so if we use slip rings, okay, then um, that device, right, whether it's a generator or a motor, is going to then produce this AC um, voltage. Okay, so the feature that they're looking for here, right, for AC is called slip rings. Define RMS voltage, right, so we already defined this. The RMS voltage, okay, is the DC equivalent voltage that produces the same power output. Next question, 9.4, calculate the induced um, RMS voltage for this generator. Okay, so for this we're going to need the graph. Okay, um, what is this? Question 9.4, right, so question 9.4, right, we want the V RMS basically, we want to calculate what is V RMS. Okay, so now from your formula sheet, Okay, if you go to your formula sheet, you basically have this table over here, right? We are looking for this, okay? So let's just quickly um, verify what we're calculating here. We're calculating the induced RMS voltage, right? So we're looking for this RMS voltage, which means that we must get this V max, right, from the graph. Can we get that? Most definitely we can, right? It's right over here. That is the maximum voltage, right? And we can read off this graph. That is a maximum voltage of 1 volt. Okay. 
So now substituting, we're going to have V of M S is equal to 1 divided by the root of 2, okay, which is basically root 2 over 2, V of M S, and I don't know what that is. Okay, so if you put this into the calculator, it works out to be, uh, to two decimal places, it's going to be 0 0.71 volts. Okay, so 0 0.71 volts. Okay. Question 9.5 says, the coil is now rotated at twice the original speed. Okay, so this must just tell you that what we're doing now is that we're rotating this coil faster. Okay, write down the period of the new curve. Well, let's go back to the original curve. Well, what is period? Period is how long it takes, right, the, let's talk about the sine function, right? How long it takes the sine function to complete a full cycle? Well, we're not in maths right now, so we're not going to talk about 360 degrees, right? We are going to look at our graph. We see that, well, we hit our first maximum at 0 0.02 seconds. Then we have a minimum at 0 0.06, right? So we have sort of like the symmetry going on over here. So basically, in the next 0 0.02 seconds, which is going to be right over here, when this graph completes its full cycle, that is going to be 0 0.08 seconds. Okay, I do not know why I put that in brackets like that. Okay, seconds. Right. So this curve completes a full cycle, right, which is actually the period in 0 0.08 seconds. Okay, now if we are rotating the coil twice as fast, right, then the curve, the new curve, right, will complete a full cycle, right, in half the amount of time, okay, so that just makes common sense, right, so basically, therefore, the period, okay, is going to be half whatever the original period was, okay, so that gives you 0 0.04 seconds, Okay. So let me say that again, right, if we're rotating the coil twice as fast, right, it's going to take it half the amount of time, okay, to complete a full cycle. And how long it takes a curve to complete a full cycle, that is defined as the period. Okay. All right. Question 9.6. It says, calculate the average power generated if the generator produces a maximum current of 2 amperes, right, so this is going to require us to go back to these formulas as well, you also have these formulas here about average power, okay, they are talking about a maximum voltage, where, not maximum voltage, what do they say, maximum current, okay, so maximum current, okay, so what can you see over here from these formulas that has maximum current, well, I can see maximum current over there, right, and what do they want us to calculate? Well, they want us to calculate the average power, so we're going to have to look at these average power equations and look for one that has current in it, okay? Um, well, this one has current and that one has current, okay? So now let's think a little bit. With the first one, can we find V of MS. Yes, we can. It's right over here. Okay. So the one with the resistance falls out. Okay. So our two equations here, we're going to use the equation. I'm going to just remove certain things here. Okay. So we're going to use the equation I of MS is equal to I max divided by the root of 2. We also want to use the equation average power is equal to V R M S times I R M S. Okay, so we already know what this is. This is zero. Okay, let's not use that one because it's inaccurate. Let's say um, the square root of two divided by two. Okay, we just need to calculate this I R M S, which we can calculate from there. They told us that the maximum current is 2 amperes, so let's substitute the 2 amperes there, 
divide that by root of 2. Okay, so I can actually just substitute that exact thing in here. Okay, oh, now all of a sudden you can see that the root of 2's cancel out, the 2's also cancel out. So this gives us an average power of just simply 1 watt. Last question over here, right, says give two advantages for using alternating, all right, or AC. Um, yeah, alternating current, which is AC, rather than direct current, which is DC, okay? So give two advantages for using AC rather than DC current. Okay, so um, one of the advantages is that AC, okay, can be transmitted over long distances okay so basically AC current can move from the power station there at ESCOM to different factories and um, houses and all of that right so we can transmit it over long distances and also it's very easy to convert right so converting AC to DC is easy compared right to trying to convert DC to AC okay I've run out of space there a little bit but basically converting AC right to DC is very easy um, compared to trying to convert DC to AC right that's basically two advantages of using um, alternating current Okay. Right, so that was question number nine, right, taken from the prelim exam, right, which was written in the KZN province.